Hello everyone. Today I want to show you a video about the Heckler & Koch HK4 pistol. It was produced between 1968 and 1984. The shown one was made in 1971. The HK4 is the first pistol made by Heckler & Koch. It is designed by Alex Seidel, the third and not in the company name mentioned company founder of Heckler & Koch and Thilo Möller, an employee. Without conversion kits, it is made of 45 component parts. Totally 47,650 units were produced, mainly in the calibers 32 ACP and 380 ACP. A number of 200 units in 380 was ordered by Venezuela and 32 ACP 12,400 pistols of this type were handed out to the Federal Customs Service of Western Germany and 2,000 to the Moroccan police. The name HK4 comes from the opportunity to use four barrels in different calibers. Government agencies called it P11. It was produced in two variants. The first one had a rifled area around the safety. This part of the slide looked like those from the Mauser HSC, its parent gun, and was primarily offered with brown grips. The second variation, like this one, has a rifled area in a raised stripe at the sides of the slide. Usually the grips were black. Because Western German companies were by the four power agreement not allowed to deliver arms to Western Berlin, Heckler and Koch needed to detour the supply of around 550 pistols for the police authorities. They were sent to the French company MAS, Manufacture Nationale d'Armes de Saint-Etienne, and got beside the HK signature, the MAS manufacturer stamps and French proof marks. They were ordered in 32 ACP with 22 conversion kits. The basic caliber of my own gun is 380 auto with 3 conversion kits, 32 ACP, 25 ACP and 22 long rifle. I've put in the 32 barrel. At first the safety check. I put the spare mag away. Safety is on, mag gets out, the mag release is European style. Caliber 7.65, that's the European synonym for 32 ACP. Ah, does the camera focus the stamp? It is engraved on the barrel. Nothing in there. The HK4 has a last round hold open. That works even magless. I do not know any other pistol with that feature. There are two ways to close the breech. First, you simply pull the trigger. Even with safety on it's possible. The other way is to insert a magazine. It doesn't matter if it is filled or empty. Cluck, it is closed. Do not forget, if there is a round in the magazine, it is chambered at once. The mag out again. The hammer is cocked now. Even when the safety is switched off, you are not able to release it. That is similar to the SIG P210. There you can also not fire without an inserted magazine. So we need to put in a mag. Then we can decock the hammer. Even in the cocked position, the hammer is closed 
that for example clothing can't jam the firing pin. You should care to hold the gun correctly. If you don't, it can bite your hand between the hammer and the receiver. Next step, field stripping. At first you remove the mag, then in unsafe mode the hammer must be cocked. The safety is switched on and then you can release the slide and the barrel with the thumbnail. In the front of the receiver there is a polymer buffer. It absorbs a share of the recoil energy so that the slide does not hit the frame too strongly that one is made of aluminum. In the two strongest calibers of this product in 32 and especially 380 it is not advisable to shoot without that buffer but that applies for every caliber. When you change the buffer you must be mindful that you don't lose the tiny steel plate in front of it. In the internet I've read that you can use the recoil spring of the Sig Sauer P232 for the caliber 380 to reduce the recoil impact onto the receiver. I have never tried it out for myself. Maybe someone can confirm or negate this. Because of the HK4 is a simple blowback system, you only need to twist the barrel upside down and push the barrel a little forward to extract it. Uh, sorry, you can't see it. I fetch a scale. Let's have a look to the weight of the slide. One hundred ninety seven point six gram, that's a little more than zero point forty three pound lips or six point eight eight ounces. Empty mark forty six gram. That's 0.10 pound lips or 1.62 ounces. To convert the pistol from center fire to rim fire, you need to twist the breech face. For that, you need a screwdriver, which is supplied by Heckler and Koch. In its grip there is a safety pin for the extractor and a cleaning chain. A brush, a little oil and some cleaning wicks are in the box with the conversion kits. Now I take the metal pin to fix the extractor. From the barrel side of the slide you press the extractor outside. There is a little hole in it for that procedure. Fetching my barrel flashlight. I hope you can see the screw at the top of the breech face inlay. A little fast motion when I screw it out. During this you need to watch the tiny spring of the firing pin. It is under weak tension and can get lost easily. This is a breech inlay with a screw. On the white paper you can see it much better than on my black gloves. Here you can see the holes for the firing pin. That one close to the screw head is for rim fire, the other one is for center fire, next to the feed lip. 
The direction of the screw is still prepared for center fire. Twisting. Like this I'm going to reinsert it. And playing with the screwdriver again. Ready. You can see that the screw head is not countersunk into the breech face as in center fire mode. At last, I put the 22 barrel into the gun. Ok, carefully pulling out the safety pin that held the extractor. The same extractor is used for each caliber. Here you can see that the extractor is pressed outside a little in a closed bolt position, even without chambered a cartridge. The center fire barrels only do this if there is a round ready to fire. As you can see in 380, the extractor does not stick out of the slide. When you chamber a cartridge, this one is a dummy, you can see the extractor is pushed outside. So that a red point is visible on its top and in the darkness you can sense it by palpation. In 380 and 32 it is equal, in 25 it is similar but less pronounced. Before we visit the range, I want to give some information about the magazines. Here are four mags lying in front of me. From top to bottom, 380 ACP, 32 ACP, 25 ACP and 22 long rifle. I take the 380 auto mag. Focusing. And a 380 round. Fits great. Taken out again. Let's watch the 32. And a second one. And a third one. That's what I wanted to show you. These two cartridges fit in the 380 magazine. Following test. The 32 magazine focusing inserting fat 380s three are enough. These two calibers use interchangeable marks. The others do not. The follower has to lift the smaller cartridges a little bit more and the 22 rounds are in a hole in the magazine a little, let's say, conical. To make the magazines of center fire and 22 more easy to distinguish from each other, 
Rimfire Max were particularly made with an orange bottom. Here on the photos you can see the follower in detail. As a rumor I have heard that you can expand the 22 capacity up to 12 rounds by shortening the spacer inside the mark. Also I have heard unconfirmed that the max of the CZ70 can also be used. Maybe one of the viewers can check this out, maybe also with usability in 380. Please let me know. Let's pack our bags and go to the range and make some fireworks in 32 ACP now. After the range I want to tell you about the precision. Let's have a look to the supplied targets. As you can see the 380 has two hits outside the inner circle. The 32 only has one outside. Also the 25. The 22 hits are all inside the center area. Obviously this could be caused by the shooter. On every target the shooter, the caliber, the day of test shooting is written down. In my case it is the 2nd December 1971. Furthermore the distance 50 meters that's 49 feet and the registry number of the barrels as well. Every barrel has an independent registry number. Even that one, which is included to the receiver and the slide, has a different number to the rest of the gun. Time for some ballistic basics. Here you can see the recoil impulse in Newton seconds that is the green stripe at the left y-axis in correlation to the muzzle energy in joule that is the blue stripe referring to the right y-axis. As you can see the recoil impulse rises with the energy of the cartridge. Although 380 and 32 have similar energy the recoil impulse is in the larger caliber more intensive. This is caused by the higher weight of the fired bullet. On the one hand every caliber has a divergent recoil impulse. On the other hand the weight of the breech is always the same. There is only one way to take influence on the time to hold the gun closed in firing process. This is only possible by changing the recoil spring. As seen in the diagram, 380 and 32 have similar muzzle energies. But energy is not the only aspect. It needs to be transferred. Usually this happens by diameter or overturning. The more energy is transferred, the less is taken through the medium. Overpenetration can be a danger for the surrounding area. Additionally I want to say 
that bullets with high energy transfer do effect faster and stronger. Nowadays the police does not use these cartridges and calibers because they are too weak for police service. Today the German police authorities use deforming ammo in 9 Luger, 9 by 19 mm. Because the HK4 was used in government service, I want to tell you some more about the performance of the full metal jacket ammo of those calibers. This diagram shows the energy transfer in joule in correlation to the penetration in centimeter shooting at 20% ballistic gelatin. Full metal jackets were used in every centerfire caliber. You can see that the 380 transfers more energy the whole way than the other ones. I did not mention that 22 caliber because it was intended for cheaper education and training. Especially the 380 and the 32 are interesting because they were introduced as service pistols. The cavern and wet clay has a volume of 440 and 390 milliliters respectively. Both of them penetrate bull bones in a diameter of 5 centimeters that are 2 inches. Generally, it is better if energy is transferred as fast as possible. A deformation or an instable run through the target helps to reach this effect. With hollow point ammo the transfer would have been earlier and with more intensity for the price of less penetration. During the service time of the HK4 such ammo was not introduced at German government authorities. Personal conclusion it is easy to carry by the weight and the measures. Technically interesting, a hunter can use it for the shot on light and injured deer or for trapping. Sports shooters are allowed to buy it for proved sports program for the sports federation called BDMP. Thanks for watching. Please excuse me my mistakes. English is a foreign language for me. I would like to read praising words for the video constructive criticism or suggestions from the viewers. Have a great day!